Craig, the uh, the third period, first penalty kill there, you're watching that, you saying yourself, that's Mason, that, that's the Mason we know, the, the confidence, the, the saves he made at three, terrific save, like, all in a row there. Does that kind of show you right there that he's back to where you expect him to be? He, he played a good game. Played a good game. When you watch Jake Voracek this season, what's different about him other than the obvious that Puck's going to one? Um, nothing. He's the same player as he was last year. I think, like I said, he came into he came into camp in real good shape. I think you know his conditioning is superb. How, what did you think of the third period as a whole with the two penalty kills and, and keeping them at bay after they were pressuring? I thought it was our best period of the game. Why? Killed a couple penalties with Mason making a few good saves, but then, you know, I thought that once we killed those penalties, we started to penetrate more, like get get pucks in and a little more intensity in the game. I thought, you know, the first two periods were not casual, but just sloppy at times for me. Um, not enough attack, you know. Thought we had more attack in the third than we did in the other two periods. Do you have a gut feeling on how long Raffle will be out or too early to know? Yeah, I don't know. Right. Talk a little bit about uh, Carlo Pagliacomo's game. Uh, obviously had a long break. It, it's what I expected. Like he, um, he's a good puck mover uh, from going on the past. You know, um, probably played him too much, but he did a good job. Michael Delzato, in terms of his partnership with Nick Schultz, has been pretty, pretty important part of carrying you guys through so far this year. They've been very good together. Um, Puck movement, defending. Uh, they both got. They both have real good sticks out there. They defend really well with their sticks. Can you uh, address the relationship between Emery and Mason? And do you believe that a team has to have a number one goaltender? Well, it, I think it's, it's it is important to have a number one goaltender. But there is tandems that worked in the past and over the years and stuff. But um, the relationship is very good. I think that uh, Ray has done a remarkable job of coming in here and just, you know, working with Mace, young guy, and, you know, mentoring him a little bit. And uh, Ray, Ray's a real good team guy, and that's, that's so important, uh, you know, not only for goalies, like, you know, when you got a, you know, like, not a young goalie, but Mace is still young and um, still learning. And, you know, you got a guy like Ray who's won a Stanley Cup and has been around and has done a lot of things, battled back from injuries and, you know, stuff like that. Ray's got a lot of character. You mentioned Jake's conditioning. Obviously, it wasn't bad last year, but where has the 10 pounds that he lost helped him the most this year? Right? Well, speed and just overall, you know, he, when you're in better shape, he lasts longer in a game for me. His speed doesn't drop off in the third periods. Claude Giroux got quite a lot of PK ice time tonight. Um, obviously, in the start of his career, he got a lot. But the last couple of years, he's got less and less. Um, was that more of like a one-game matchup thing, or do you expect to see him have more PKS times? Well, with so? Adam Hall not here anymore, I don't have a right-handed uh, centerman to uh, take draws. So Claude Giroux, you know, best face-off guy on the team, and uh, you know, we need to use him there in that situation. So he took a lot of draws, and uh, a couple that he didn't win, he had to end up staying out there. He's killed penalties before for us, and uh, he's done a good job. So yesterday, you, yesterday you were saying with the PK that. You, you know, the, the main thing, the little low you guys had was not getting zone clears when you needed, the, the shot block that you might need. Were you seeing those kind of things tonight? The, the four for four? <clears throat> well, there was only a couple times where we didn't get the puck out where we should have, but I uh, thought the guys were doing a better job being in the shooting lanes and, you know, forcing them not to shoot or shoot it wide, you know, just forcing them to pass it again. That's, that's, the, that's important. Um, you know, anytime you shoot a puck in the middle of the ice, you know, on a power play, at, on the back end, it's a dangerous shot because there's got screens and deflections, all that stuff. So it's important that the, the forwards are doing a good job out in the lanes, getting pressure on them, making them put it back down the wall. They did a good job of that tonight. Are you are you really not seeing Jake take it up a level, or you just don't want to say that because it's just 12 games? Is he just? I don't think his effort like, take it up a level. He's playing good. He's playing really good. You know, his efforts, I don't think, has changed from last year. This guy cares, and he gives you everything he's got every game. That's, you know, so 
whatever's changed, you know, for me, like I know he, he's in better shape this year, he's lighter. Um, so those things are a factor for sure. Anything else? Um, Mason has said several times that in the last few days about wanting to practice more over here because of the lighting and the boards, the weird bounces off the boards, get used to that. Have you thought, have you heard this? And do you think there's any validity to maybe practicing here a couple times to, to help your goaltenders out? We practice here every game. Right? Yeah, but that's not the same as practicing for, you know, four days, 80, 90 minutes a day. Yeah, you know that. Still. I'll look into it. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> okay.